Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials video 122 and in this video I'm going to show you how to draw ray diagrams for both converging and diverging lenses. I've been wearing lenses most of my life and the reason why is that I'm nearsighted. In other words, the converging lens in my eye is focusing the image in front of my retina and so everything's out of focus. And so what you can do to solve that is you simply put a diverging lens out here. What that does is moves the rays apart so they're focusing in the proper location. But you might be farsighted. If you're farsighted, you're putting the image too far inside your retina. And so how would we solve that problem? Just with another converging lens. So we can focus it right at this point back here. And so when you're looking at where the image is created, remember we're looking at the focusing of those rays. And so light, as it moves from one medium to another, it can be bent. We call that refraction. And what's doing the bending is going to be a lens. The ones that we'll deal with in here are converging and diverging lenses made of glass. And so as it does that, it creates an image. Sometimes that image is real and sometimes it's a virtual image. How do you tell the difference between the two? If you put a piece of paper there, the real image will show up and a virtual image won't. When you're looking at a mirror, for example, there's a virtual image on, of you on the other side, but you can't put a piece of paper there. You simply can't get in. Two lenses we'll deal with are gonna be converging and diverging lenses, and, and a way to figure out where that image actually is is to use a ray diagram. We'll draw just two or three rays in each of our drawings. So as the rays come in, they'll either be converged or diverged, and figuring out where they go tells us where the image is going to be. Before we get to that, you should have a good gut feeling for how refraction occurs and I use a marching band analogy for this. Imagine a marching band is going down through a parking lot they're keeping, we're looking at it from above, but each of the trumpet players keep an equal distance between them and the person next to them. And so as they're marching through the parking lot, they eventually come up to some sand. And so what's gonna happen to that group in the front? Well, it's gonna slow down compared to the ones behind it. But since there's no angle here, it's simply gonna go at a slower rate through it and there would be no bending or no refraction. But watch what happens if we come in at an angle like this. As it comes in at an angle, which of those trumpet players are going to slow down first? It's going to be the one on the bottom. And so as the one on the bottom slows down first, watch what happens to the other ones. They're bending like that, so we get refraction. And you can see that right here. As the light comes in, as it hits the glass, it's refracting here because it's traveling at a slower rate. So let's get to a converging lens and figure out where that image is actually going to be. Now there's a few things we want to define. We've first got 2F and F. This stands for the focal point, and this is two times the focal point. For dealing with mirrors, we sometimes call this the center of curvature. So you can imagine if this is a circle over here, the radius would would always be the same to 2F right here. So let's draw how this works with a lens. Again, the light is gonna go through this lens. This is glass and this is gonna be air out here. So to draw that, you first start by taking the top of your image, or the object rather, and you're gonna draw a parallel line into the lens itself. So we're going from parallel and then we're gonna go through the focal point. And so we draw a line like that. And so that is going to bend or refract right here and it goes right through the focal point like that. Now let's turn that around and we're gonna start by drawing it through the focal point. So how do we do that? We draw a line like that. So now we go through the focal point and now it's gonna go parallel. And so now we've got converging, you can see the converging rays over here. And so since those rays are converging, we know that the image is going to be upside down here, since this was the top over here. And we also know that it's gonna be a real image, a true image. In other words, you could put a piece of paper right here and you would have that on the other side, just like you have a true image on the inside of your eye. Now we can check ourselves on this as well. So you can draw another ray that goes right through the center of the lens. And so we know that this is gonna be where that image is going to be. Now let's watch what happens as we move inside the focal point. It gets a little bit weird here. And so what do we do? Again, we draw from the top of this object here, we draw it parallel and then we're going to go through the focal point but now it's a little bit different since we're inside the focal point how do you draw it from the focal point well it's going to look like that 
and now it's going to be parallel like this. And so as we look at this, these two rays on this side are diverging from each other. You can see that they're not going to intersect at any point, and so we're not going to find an image on the right side. We're going to have to play those backwards. Same thing with the line through the center. All of these are div diverging, and so we have to play those lines backwards. And so where's our image going to be? It's going to be on the same side as the object. We now call this a virtual image. You could put a piece of paper there and it's simply not going to show up, but that's where it's going to appear to show up. Now let's test this. So we're going to use a sim bucket simulation. So we're going to be able to drag the object on the left side and you can see as we drag the object, the, the image is true and it's on the right side. But watch what happens as we approach the focal length. Now the image is on the left side and it's going to be a virtual image. You can see that through the dotted lines right here and we can even measure the distances to figure out where that image is going to be. A better way to do this is actually use lenses and figure out where those objects are going to be found and the virtual or true images. Now let's go to a diverging lens. And so how do we do this? Still have a focal point, still have 2F. I start by drawing that parallel and then we want to draw through the focal point. That's the tendency is to draw it right down in this direction. But remember a diverging lens isn't going to do that. If a marching band is approaching it's going to bend away and then bend away like that. And so what focal point are we going to use? We're going to use this focal point right here. So that's going to be where the ray moves out. And now we could go through the focal point. So it goes like that. Where is going to be our parallel line? It's going to be like that. And so on the right side, again, we have all these diverging lines back here. We even have the center line like that. And so where is the image going to be? Well, we have to go backwards and find where they intersect. And so we're going to have that virtual image right here. It's going to be upright. And it's also going to be smaller, but it's a virtual image. So we could check that again. So if we take our object on the left side, you can see our virtual image right here. As we approach the focal length or the focal point, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, but it's always upright and virtual in nature. And so did you learn to use diagrams for both converging and diverging lenses? Again, the one thing, the caveat is once you move in the focal point on the converging lens, it gets a little tricky. And then finally, could you plan data collection. Could you use a simulation like the one I did or actual lenses to figure out where the images are? I hope so and I hope that was helpful.